Now let's move on to the technical detail. We begin by installing grid infrastructure and configuring ASM. That's something your system administrators and database administrators between them will have done any number of times. And the demonstrations I'm going to do assume that's already been completed. We create disk groups. You would normally create disk groups specifically for ACFS, if only because they're going to be big. You know, they might be terabytes of disk space assigned to these things. On the disk group, we create a volume. A volume is a special type of file. The volume is externalized to the operating system as a device driver. When you create and enable your volume, you will be creating a file in your slash dev directory in exactly the same way that when you present a LUN, a fiber attached LUN from your SAN to the server, it gets a device driver in slash dev. An iSCSI device gets a device driver in slash dev. ACFS works exactly the same. So we'll create a volume and see it being made visible to the operating system as a device. Then we bring that device into use by formatting it with the file system, mounting it and using it like any other file system you might have already. Having installed grid infrastructure and configured ASM, the next step is to create my disk groups. The environment I'm working within is just a little two node cluster. But note that everything we're going to go through works perfectly well single instance. ACFS is not by any means only for rack clustered environments. So I'll connect to my ASM instance. And all I have at the moment is one disk group called data. And this query shows that my one data disk group is mounted by the two instances in my cluster, instance one and instance two. I now need to create disk groups for the use of ACFS. So select inside E path group number header status from GV dollar ASM disk order by inside E and path. This query shows me what devices I have available at the hardware level. And there is SDB1, SDC1. These are the first partitions on SCSI disk B and SCSI disk C. And they are members of group one, which is my data disk group here. Then I've got all these other devices. They are not members of any disk group at all at the moment. And note that they are mounted or visible on both instance one and instance two. That is important. You want to have symmetry at this point. Now, to create my disk group, I'll run this command. Create disk group G1, external redundancy. I'm not going to, bothering to bother with mirroring for this demonstration. And I'm going to base it on the devices SDG1 and SDE1. Then, so that I can demonstrate mirroring, or replication rather, I'll also create a second group called G2 on devices SDF1 and SDG1. By default, Oracle sets the compatibility of a disk group back to the older release, so that if you wish, you could use the disk group for version 10 or version 11 databases, I'm going to raise the compatibility to the current release, 12.1.0.2. No reason not to. And if I do that, that will enable all of the latest capabilities. Because this is a cluster, I need to make sure that the disk groups are mounted on both nodes. So. The SRVCTL utility, start the disk group, which disk group? Group G1. And by default, that will make sure it is mounted on both the nodes in the cluster. So let's just see whether ASM is happy with this. I'll rerun my query that checks the state of my disk groups. And there you see group G1 
is mounted by instance 1, by instance 2, and also it is mounted by instance 1, and the same for group G2. Taking a look at the state of the disks, with my query against GB dollar ASM disk, we see that these four devices have now been brought into use. I've created my disk groups. The next step is to create the volumes. A volume is a special file type that we create on the disk group. Before doing that, I need to raise the ACFS compatibility of the groups. Also disk group G1, set attribute compatible ADVM to the current release. And do the same for my group G2. The ADVM, the ASM Dynamic Volume Manager, that is the process that publishes the volumes to Unix. That's the set of processes that actually generate the device drivers. Now, to create a volume, alter disk group G1, add volume, give it a name, vol1, size 4.2 gigabytes. I've chosen 4.2 for a reason. The minimum size for an ACFS volume is 4 gigabytes. And I've made it just slightly more than that. If I made it terabytes big, this demonstration would take some time. And now the volume is created. I'll create a second volume, which I shall call vol2, on my second disk group, group G2. And that should have generated the device drivers in the slash dev directory. Do the device drivers exist? Let's find out. There they are. In dev ASM, vol1-480 and vol2-35. The numeric suffixes are to ensure that you have unique names for each volume. Note these are block devices, and as far as Unix is concerned, they're just like any other block device. From now on, everything is perfectly normal Unix administration.